What if we could learn from outstanding leaders in business, sports, and education from some of the best voices in corporate America? Lighting the Path is a series of interviews with industry leaders whose stories highlight strategies that build purpose-driven cultures, engage and retain top talent, develop drivers that create high-performance teams, and connect people to the vision of your company. Join us to hear from game-changing, talented leaders whose paths make a difference at work and at home. My question yeah. for you, though, is that how, in, in the times of, of uncertainty, in times of difficult situation, that I don't have all the answers that I want or need, where does my self-confidence come from? What can I do to wrestle that bear? It's, um, it's an exciting, obviously, as I mentioned before, it's like my first 10 years in the military, which is all about building total confidence to enable soldiers to be able to go to any theater of war, whether that's Arctic warfare, jungle warfare, desert warfare, I guess, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan, I suppose, and um, Northern Europe at the time in the UK. And um, so that was really part of the process was to, you know, over a period of time to develop what we called uh, not just situational confidence, but total confidence, not arrogance, but confidence to operate in, in tough environments. And that requires uh, people to to be developed. So I think it's something in, in business we miss and think, as leaders, you know, we should be teachers, educators, and, you know, we have to educate people that we're in a different world uh, to what we're educated for. Uh, we're in a different world of how we used to lead. You know, what worked a few years ago is not going to work anymore, so we've got to be looking forward. So with confidence, I always, you know, challenge leaders to say, you know, just out of interest, how many of you got KPIs around trust or confidence or how people feel and uh, no one ever says yes you know <laughs> well, we can't, it's, difficult, it's difficult to measure that I think, right. well yeah surely surely you know it doesn't matter about measurement you know surely our focus should be around building the confidence of our teams because we know that when we've got confidence teams they're engaged you know, they want to be part of something special then they will perform at a higher level. You know, my if I'm a sports coach, you know, think about the Olympics going on now, is you know, my job as a coach is to get my players on the pitch feeling fantastic, confident, you know, clear about what the strategy is, what the gameplay, but also adaptable enough to be able to adjust depending on you know what their competition are going to do. You know, the the phrase in the military is is fantastic. You know, the your plan only lasts as long as the first contact with the enemy. Mm -hmm. um, I think was it Mike Tom Mike Tyson was it? I think said that the arrow was planned until he yeah, morning, yeah, punched, the, yeah, yeah. yeah punched in the mouth, you know. And it's right. that adaptability is so important. Yeah, um, so, I talked over. I want to make sure we chronicle that. It had to do with the fact yeah. that Tyson <laughs> said that uh, a good plan go, goes out the window with the first punch. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And how I control my emotions on, on that response to that. But but I think you're right. I think as you know, as leaders, yeah, we have a responsibility to to really you know, engage our people, to build that confidence, to actively think about it. And I think, you know, sadly, the way we run our businesses often, I, I call it um, red dot chasing, where, you know, people, you know, looking at scorecards and KPIs and, you know, again, they can be very complicated, but they can be very, they should be very simple. Uh, and they should really be output for performance measures, I think, and focus on what we should do to get the output. Um, but we're, we're always drawn towards the red dots, you know, the, the, the errors, the mistakes, and we don't spend enough time, you know, celebrating successes and, you know, selling, uh, uh, I guess, progress, really. And one of my um, uh, good friends is a guy called Phil Davis, and Phil Davis was a, an international rugby player that um, retired and went into coaching. And he's coached various teams. He's part of World Rugby now. But he he was the coach um, of Nabilia when uh, they went to the World Cup in Japan a few years ago. And they were drawn in a group that uh, contained the All Blacks, you know, and New Zealand, uh, South Africa, uh, Italy, um, and Canada. And probably Canada was probably the only sort of, I mean, because their, their team basically is, um, it's a, an amateur team playing against professional players. And I said to Phil, I said, how on earth are you going to go and get your teams engaged and motivated knowing they're going to get smashed you know, in every every game against these professional players? He said, well, you know, our, our focus is not just winning games. It's about what, what rugby does for the community. So that was, you know, the purpose. But operationally back in yeah, back in the the games it's about making progress so our win is when every player makes progress so seeing progress as motivational it's not yeah we know we're, we're going to struggle to win matches 
but we know, you know what's in our gift and our control is is how we improve what we do. Yeah, and the stories we tell when we get back to you know improve improve and, and use rugby as a, a mechanism to improve uh, the impact locally. And I think that was you know very admirable and and you know massive a massive uh, difference to what a lot of people would be saying is we've got to go out there and win. You know, so there are lots of things we can do. But going back to confidence, really, I think for me, confidence is you you build a psychologically safe environment, so a high trust environment. You support people and you enable people to feel comfortable to use their courage to get outside of their comfort zone and get into that stretch zone and help them to realize actually they can achieve more. And then you spend time reviewing and learning and reflecting on that. And then you go again and then you go again and then you go again. And that's the basis of, of military training in the, in the British Army around how to get people to perform at the highest level is you you create that supportive environment and then you push you push and you push and you push. And, and that's really how you build confidence because suddenly you realize you can do so much more than you thought was possible. Graham, I want to talk about um, the future. And, and the, the, because right now, um, you made a comment earlier that the way we used to lead is not how we lead today. My question is from your perspective, and you've had a chance to work with everything from entrepreneurial startups to a little bit global uh, brands such as Samsung and DuPont. And so you've yeah. got a, a unique perspective. Um, when you, when you look toward the future, what do you see that as leaders, we need to be prepared to develop in ourselves and our teams to be able to be successful, to get the results that's expected of us. And we expect of ourselves. Yeah. I think if I take a, a simplistic answer to a, a complex question, I think the first thing is, yeah, it starts with who we are as, as individuals, you know, to to be a successful leader, it starts with self. You can't lead other teams unless you can lead yourself. So I think understanding who you are is almost like the, the center circle, I guess, of, of a, a model where, you know, you are aware of what your strengths are. You you are aware of your unique, unique brand uh, and you build a, a leadership philosophy around who you are as a person. You know, I know I have a certain style. I can adapt that style, but but I know that, there are areas that aren't my strengths that I would need to bring people in to help me with that. So I think that's that's really important. Um, the second stage then is, is being really clear about what your purpose is. And uh, yeah, that's your guiding, you know, your North Star, I guess a lot of people call it, but that's that's the center hub. And we talk a lot about resilience and you know, it's hard to be resilient if you haven't got a purpose uh, and you haven't got a vision uh, of where where yeah, your life should, should be leading. Um, so I think that's really important. Once you understand who you are and why you do what you do, I think the next step then is to, based on the context and situation you're in, is to work out what you should be doing as a leader. Uh, and I think we, we talked um, a little bit about, you know, how you then have to craft an approach to the context. Because at the end of the day, leadership is contextual. How I lead a, a business in Singapore, for example, will be different to how I would run a, a business in Vegas, for example. We talked about that as an example. And, um, yeah, so I have to have that ability to be able to look at the context, look at the maturity of the team or the business I'm leading, look at you know, where they are from a cultural point of view, and then craft a solution that works for me and for them in their situation. So I call that you know, crafting what I call your leadership disciplines. And you know, I've written extensively around what I believe they are for the new world. And you know, very quickly, you know, for me, it's around how you create a high performance environment where success is inevitable, number one. Number two is around how you awaken possibility in people to deliver extraordinary results. Um, how you then operate with boldness, simplicity, and speed. You know, as I like the picture behind you, <laughs> about being bold. Um, how, you, how you then um, you know, strive to be authentic, how you live the real, real self and be confident enough to be you um, and have that confidence to, to realize that the more you are you, the more believable you are, the more people will connect with you. Um, I think it's around your ability to inspire action. So I think that's around ability to um, change people's mindsets through stories and examples and give things meaning. And, and um, you know, I think that's the difference between a good leader and a great leader. A good leader is technically great, but a great leader can actually give things meaning. So I think that's a bit like a musician. You know, a good musician can play the music. A great musician gives it meaning to the audience. So I think that's key. Um, it's our ability to build high performance teams, you know, and set our teams up for success and to engage our people and uh, sustain that high performance. It's around unleashing innovation. 
you know, we've got to continually be growing and, and being agile and developing, uh, you know, creating plans and then adapting and, and, and moving forward. I guess you're know, managing complexity, ambiguity and risk is a, is a key element these days. And, and you know, the final couple of things really for me is, you know, traditional stuff, which is, you know, we've got to be able to educate. We've got to be able to, you know, be a teacher, be a mentor, be a coach, and we've got to develop people. And I think the final bit, of course, is at the end of the day, we're paid on results. So, you know, your, the credibility and trust, you know, grows, and it, you know, as long as you deliver results. So you have to be able to deliver at pace. Um, I think, you know, they would be the, the key concepts. Then the final bit of the jigsaw for me, really, today's world is you then got a crap the way of working. And, you know, a lot of people have talked about that, about creating the right habits. And, and I think that's that's the crux of it, isn't it, is you know, often um, you mentioned that you're a, you're an executive coach as well. And um, it's something I do occasionally. And, and I've noticed when I when I ask you, uh, chief execs or senior leader or C-suite leaders, I say, you know, just what is it you do? And uh, they'll, they'll often say, well, you know what I do? I'm a CEO of a, a person. Yeah, I know that, but that's your title. That's not what you do. What are your daily habits? And, you yeah, know, they'll talk about, oh, the phone goes off in the morning and I wake up and I look at my phone, look at emails, look at problems, drive to work, tell people off based on the problems I've had, get to the office, have back-to-back -back meetings. Uh, and then when we stop and, and reflect on that, again, well, is that really productive? Is that really how you want to lead your life? Is, is that really what a leader should be doing? Uh, and often the answer is no. Um, so I think you've got to get down to your daily routines and rituals and, and ways of working, the uh, cadence, I guess, or um, your approach. I, I call that a, a concept called the leadership flywheel. So, you know, for me, it's around, you know, leading self, leading your team, creating a plan, communicating that plan, you know, executing, uh, delivering, aligning, you know, being agile and, and that sort of creating that momentum. But you've got to create, I guess, the drumbeat of how you operate. And, and that all stems from being really clear about, you know, who you are and what your purpose is, what you want to achieve and what your values are. Uh, and, uh, you know, aligning all that together to to work in a way that works. And, you know, I, I've, you know, luckily, you know, we talked about you know, going native in the military about, you know, quite often we go for peacekeeping. So, you know, rather than being combat situations, and peacekeeping is always more difficult than, than uh, combat situations. But you go in there and you've got to, you've got to go native, you've got to go local, uh, and you've got to really lead with empathy and, and be more compassionate and understand where they're coming from. So I think, you know, they are, they are key areas where you need to adapt your way of, of living and working based on the context you're actually in. And I think if you do those, uh, then I think you'll be really successful going forward. Yeah, what's interesting is if you look at this list of criteria that you put as far as going forward as leaders, results, of course, has to be on the list, right? That's what we yeah. the reason why I brought in as leaders focus on results. That's most people grab yeah. it pretty easily. Then you look at what are the yeah. habits that you have that help yeah. drive the results, habits about prioritizing. Everything you said before that had to do with, uh, they label them soft skills. Yeah, a lot of and, it is. Yeah. And, and, the, and those soft skills, um, if you go back 10 years ago, 20 years ago about what a leader was, that wasn't yeah. part of our conversation. Our conversation no. was 90% on results. Yeah, yeah. But I think today, because you have a list of, I, I didn't count them all, eight or nine different yeah. things we have yeah. to look at. Um, as leaders, you're challenging us to really look at um, this art of self-reflection. Yeah. It's a big, uh, the, I'll use the word context a couple of times. What's the context of the people, the situation, the circumstance? Can I look at the people that are, choosing to follow me through yeah. their eyes, through yeah, their yeah. situation, their circumstance, so that I can yeah. step up and drive yeah, yeah. things forward. Uh, I, I guess you, know, um, go on, you, you can ask no, a question. No, that, that's, that, that's, a, that's a powerful yeah. and very important message, for, especially yeah. for people who are used to looking at leadership as being thumb down, push, yeah. drive, yeah. make something happen, make something yeah. happen, make something yeah. happen. Yeah, yeah, I think um, yeah, you can you can lead from the back as well and from the side. It doesn't have to be from the top. Um, I think it's yeah. Today it's more about you know leading through you know, that human connection. That you know I'm inspired by that person. I want to work with that person. I want to you know be part of what they're doing, and I feel proud to to be part of it. I think that's that's the way it works. And yeah, you know, I, I talked um, before the session that that my my wife's um, into into horses and does dressage, and she always talks about yeah you know, when you're working with horses, and we have used horses as part of uh, leadership feedback, which is which is great because 
Most of don't know what position you are in a the business. <laughs> they just give you brutal feedback. And it's all around that emotional connection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because obviously they're prey animals. And and if if they think you're a threat, they won't work with you. But if they connect with you, uh, yeah, almost like the right frequency, then then they will work with you because you're not a threat. And I think it's the same with human beings. You know, we we connect with certain be- people because we're on the right frequency. A bit like a communication process, isn't it? It's almost like imagine a, a radio that's transmitting and receiving. If I'm sending out the wrong frequency, People just won't get it. They won't connect to it. And um, so I think yeah, there's um, a lot of stuff that you know that we can do. And I think when you know, when you're not stressed and, and you're being authentic and you're relaxed and confident, then you're sending out a certain, uh, I, I guess, electrical frequency, aren't you, that people will connect to and go, you know what, yeah, I believe what that person's saying. I, I like what they're saying. Yeah, I can connect with that. I want to follow. And I think that's really what, what leadership's all about, really. Yeah, it really is. And it's not, the, and I'm going to make sure that, that people aren't um, losing sight of the fact that the importance of results. This yeah. isn't a type oh, yeah. of thing where we're saying, let's just make everybody comfortable. Let's hold hands. Because I think yeah. sometimes leadership is literally making the team that's following us feel uncomfortable. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a, yeah. it's a key component. Yeah. But first, yeah, we absolutely. have to become uncomfortable and step in that place and be able to help people feel uncomfortable because that's where their growth is going to come from, won't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a magic. And once you get outside that comfort zone, into that stretch zone, but you still feel supported, yeah, that's the magical bit, you know. And um, yeah, my hobby is uh, motor racing. And, you know, I have to you know, go to a new circuit and I have to have a team behind me that, that helps me to to progress. And, you know, and I think that's, yeah, that's the exciting bit, isn't it? When you, you learn and grow as a human being. Uh, well, that's, part of what uh, Dan Pink talks about, isn't it, around uh, mastery, isn't it, really? Yeah, I, I've got an example where you know, people can get caught up in results and, and not think about what that really means. So you you talked before about engagement surveys and you know, the results going down. And I remember working with an organization where you know, they just got their you know, staff engagement surveys. It, it was something like the Gallup, I'm not sure what it was, but you know, very similar, something very similar. And they'd gone up something like about 8% you know, from my day. Uh, 60, 61 or two percent to let's say seventy percent. I can't remember the exact number. So I, I'm I'm sat there thinking that's pretty poor, really. <laughs> thinking, yeah, I wouldn't rest unless we're hundred percent. You know why? Why are they you know, patting each other on the back saying that's fantastic? Yeah, we got some great results there. And I just asked them. I said, okay, well, let's just stop and think about that for a moment. So um, just out of interest, yeah, you know, what what is your annual uh, wage bill? And, yeah, everyone looked at the FD, <laughs> as they do. And uh, I can't remember the exact figures, but it was like 10 million, let's say. 10 million pounds a year. Okay, so you're spending 10 million pounds a year on, on people in your business. Yeah, yeah, we are, yeah. And uh, so you've got 70% engagement. Okay, so that's 30% of your people don't really want to be in your business. What does that equate to as a salary cost? Uh, and obviously, that's a lot of money, isn't it? <laughs> when you yeah. think about it. And you turn it to that number, and they go, "Oh my God, I've not really thought about it that situation." Yeah, you know, I need to, I need to rethink about that, and, and and maybe we do need to to work on this this soft skill stuff, this engagement piece, and you know, start talking about how people feel, and um, you know, all all that sort of great stuff that we know is important. Because yeah, I think it's you know, I think as you progress in in terms of your, your seniority, I think it, it's important to become less technical, I guess, but. Obviously, there are technical roles out there. You need to be really good at technical. But I guess what I'm talking about is you know, the leadership side of that that non technical bit, which is which is really about the soft skills. And you often, if I if I'm often teaching around projects and program leadership and change management and change leadership, and yeah, you know, everyone I know who's really experienced will tell me that it's twenty percent process and eighty percent about people. Mm-hmm, very much so. Yeah. Because what happens? Want to get results? Yeah, it's about relationships first and then deliverables. You know, <laughs> it's all about people. Yeah. Until we get to a stage where we are employing all robots, which apparently yeah. that's yeah. supposed to happen. I'm not sure when. Yeah, yeah. Until yeah. we get there as human yeah. beings, the way we're wired as human beings is to have an emotional response. And I think yeah. emotions sometimes take on a bad label. You know, yeah. it's, it's just how we respond to life. And uh, yeah. now the ones that people who respond, and their, their resp- emotional yeah. response is out of kilter. That's that's a different yeah. story. Yeah. But in all situations and circumstances, people are going to respond through some type of emotional window. And absolutely, I mean, one of my, my favorite definitions I heard someone say to me once was, uh, "Our emotions are just energy in motion." 
Mm-hmm. And uh, that really stuck with me. You know, thinking, yeah, it is about energy really at the end of the day, and it can be good mm-hmm. energy or bad energy. So it's something that is really great. It's quite interesting. You know, we we often um, we use a, a, a little technique to get people to articulate how they're feeling. We use that we call it a moodogram, which is basically a, a tool with a couple of axes, and over a period of time, you know, draw out you know the the, the sine wave of, of how you've been feeling over a period of time. Uh, and sometimes you'll be working with a certain team, you thinking. This isn't going to work with feelings, you know, because they're just not there. Yeah, they're not not they don't feel safe enough to talk about their feelings, or or maybe they can't, you know, because you know that's who they are. So we we change the word to energy, and it's really interesting how people can talk about energy, uh, mm-hmm. but they find it really hard to talk about feelings. And I love uh, that. I, I guess, you have to understand yeah. the reason that you and I were supposed to speak today is because I need to be I need to be given that phrase energy and motion yeah. because I love that definition because it is so true. Uh, yeah, that is, there's energy that in motion because the challenge you have with the example you gave the you know, the thirty percent uh, whatever the, yeah. that were disengaged, yeah, uh, totally disengaged or whatever. Uh, that's what happens is is what happened. They quit, but they didn't turn their notice in. And what yeah. happens if you look at that's a subculture that is existing within yeah. the the environment. Yeah, and if you are yeah, not yeah. dealing with that, you're yeah. really. Uh, losing the overall effectiveness of, 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 of the, the organization. So Absolutely. I, uh, as yeah. I, I knew what happened is I wish mm-hmm. we could have blocked out a couple of hours to do this because <laughs> talk to and it's just filled with, with a great, great, uh, um, I, I think, insight that right. the, the people that are choosing to, to listen to this, I think there's a lot of takeaway. If somebody wanted to follow up with you and follow you, what's the best way to either see you or be in contact with you? Well, I'm uh, really active on LinkedIn. So if you search, you know, Graham Wilson or, or even Leadership Wizard on uh, LinkedIn, I'm sure you'll find me. Uh, more than happy to connect um, on that. Uh, so I share a lot of my thoughts and ideas on there. But our um, our, our business website is um, uh, the successfactory.co.uk. Uh, but there's also a personal website, which is grahamwilson.com. Um, so feel free to, to reach me um, it, it, by any of those means and uh, love to carry on a conversation you know, and uh I always say to myself, you know, if I've had a really tough day, I, I, I'll stop and reflect in the evening and uh, think, you know, have I made someone think or have I gifted someone some ideas or thoughts? And if I have, it's been a great day. Um, so that's uh, having that clarity uh, yeah, makes makes the world a wonderful place, you know. Um, yeah. Well, super. The rest got, just got, follows, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, well, I've got news for you, Graham. Uh, you consider this a great day because you've <laughs> really helped <laughs> uh, me think of some things that uh, – that I really Brilliant. like. I've walked away. I know I've been talking to you, but I've been taking notes the whole time. So, <laughs> uh, it's, it's been great. great. Uh, yeah. we'll I mean, of course, there's, um, yeah, I've written all these in books as well. So uh, once you're linked in with it, you'll see all the books as well. Out. So there's plenty of you know, tools and thoughts and ideas in the books as well. So. Awesome. Well, that, this is the reason I wanted to share you with my audience. And uh, uh, we'll drop this also, uh, Graham's contact information in, in the show notes. So it's been, again, thank you so much for the, the gift of your time and your, your experience and most importantly, your heart. Uh, it's been uh, it's uh, visiting with my you. pleasure. It's been an honor. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thanks for joining us today on Lighting the Path, Strategies for Tomorrow's Leaders. If anything in this podcast speaks to you, if I've challenged you, or if you want to spend time digging into this subject a little deeper, or if you disagree with me, reach out. My contact information is on our website, lightingthepath.net, or email me at mike at mikelejeune.com. Also, look for me on LinkedIn. I'd love to connect our networks. Keep lighting the path for those who choose to follow you. It's more than a responsibility. It's an honor.